Did you know that you need to challenge your brain every day? Hi, I'm Bernice Hunt and I am a brain health specialist. I work with women just like you who are starting to notice a few memory challenges and I help you to stay sharp so that as you age, you can travel, still have fun with your grandkids and experience new adventures without missing a beat. As a teacher for over 30 years, I've had to challenge a lot of kids. But did you know that adults also need to be challenged, especially as they age? Now, did you catch my last video? I had a video on a few days ago, and it was about challenging your brain. And it talked about your brain being in a rut or being on cruise control, how that wasn't beneficial in terms of keeping your brain high quality functioning. So if you haven't seen that video, it's on my Facebook page or it's on my YouTube, Keep Your Brain Sharp, and you can find it on there and see what that's about. But tonight I wanted to talk more about specific ways that you can challenge your brain, especially during the holiday season. Okay, so we seem to have this thing turned around, this aging thing. Most people have a mindset that as you age, you kind of back off of activity. You do less and less. And so by the time you get to retirement, you're laying down, sitting back, lounging around, and you don't feel like doing too much of anything because you've done that already and you're not doing that anymore. But that's not the correct attitude to take because you should keep your brain challenged, okay? Because researchers have told us that when your brain is not active, when it's not being challenged, that you have premature aging versus when you are challenging and engaging your brain, you slow down that aging process. And I don't know about you, but I want that aging process slowed down so I have quality life all the way through. Okay, I want to be high functioning all the way through. It's kind of like um, with kids. You know, when you have your, your kids, you don't put them in a closet and, and only feed them and give them something to drink and not challenge them with discovery or experience or problem solving. You get them out there and get them into the world and interacting. If you didn't, you would not, they wouldn't grow up to be productive, you know, and capable of, of taking care of themselves and that whole thing. Same thing as you age, you have to continue to do those same kind of things if you want your brain to still functioning at a high level. Okay, they say a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And even though we think that, that a lot in terms of children, at any age, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And that's what happens when you're not frequently or regularly engaging your brain. Doing nothing is not good for you, not when you're a child. It's not good for you when you're an adult. Okay, like, it's think, like think of a car. I compare a brain kind of like to a car. Which kind of car do you want? Do you want a, a, a vintage classic car, smooth running? Now, it's old, but it's well kept and it still can move. Or do you want a broken down jalopy that's rusted out sitting somewhere in the backyard? You know, which kind of brain do you want? I don't know about you, but I know which kind I want. And it's not the rusty, dusty one. Right. So and you, you keep your brain moving smoothly like that and functioning well by keeping it active and engaged. And by that, I'm, I'm talking about discovery. I'm talking about problem solving. And I'm talking about interaction. Okay. Those things we want to do on a regular, regular basis. Okay. Let's talk about some things you can do. Say, okay, I want to be active. I want to do those things. What can I do? On my video, um, a few days ago, we talked a little bit about cooking and that is especially a good route to take during the holidays because there's so many cooking opportunities, okay? And so, but we don't, um, we're not talking about cooking the same thing the same way all the time, although, you know, that has its place and you can cook something, but we want you to branch out a little bit and try something new or tweak something that you already did. Put a different topping on your, your sweet potatoes or, or, or your pies or something. Use different spices. Use a different kind of sweetener. Challenge your brain to come up with new things and new discoveries about how you might be able to fix something. Or if you're not a cook, and we're not all cooks, so if you're not a cook, get someone who has a favorite dish or who loves to cook to show you how to cook something. 
Or these days you can get on YouTube and they'll show you how to cook something. So there really is no excuse. Have someone teach you how to cook something that you haven't ever tried before. Or you volunteer to teach someone else one of your favorite dishes. You know, take it down through the family so they, they all learn how to make that dish. Okay, but do something with cooking that you enjoy. If, if you love if you love to cook, if that resonates with you. Now, you don't have to do all these things I'm suggesting, but find something that resonates with you, something that you're willing to try and make sure you're doing those kind of things. And cooking is just one example. During the holidays, there's a plethora of different things you can do. After you cook it, you can share it with someone. You can either have them sample the things or you can sit down and you can eat it with someone. And that's a lot of interactive with that all as well. And so there's lots of things you can do with cooking. Another thing during the holidays is decorating. Yeah, now I don't mean that you have to go all out with your decorating. It can be inside or outside. It can be public or it can be private. It can just be something that you do for yourself. No one else really has to see it. You know, if you're not the flamboyant type, that's fine. But you still want to get into that creativeness that comes with decorating. And so you can do it either way you want, but just make sure that you create something. And in that, you have a lot of discovery, a lot of problem solving. And if you care to share, you can have a lot of interaction as well. And during the holidays, once again, there's all kind of things you can do from gingerbread houses to trying to make your own wreath to, to doing your even a color by number or paint by number um, <laughs> painting, which I have done. You can do one of those, but just find something that you can be creative with, with cards that you send or whatever. Be creative. It's a wonderful opportunity during the holidays to do that. And the other thing I want to talk about is reflection, reflecting, because once again, the holidays is a wonderful time to reflect on all kinds of things. And so if it's a time if you want to um, show your appreciation, you want to show your thankfulness, you want to share with people how much of a blessing they've been in your life, all those kinds of things. The holidays is a wonderful time to do that, to show people that you care about them. And so, you know, in these days, you know, you may or may not want to, you know, uh, spend stamps on mailing cards or all that. Cause these days you don't have to. You can call them. You can text them. You can even send a video of them just talking to them about um, how you appreciate them. Of course, you can send letters or, or, or cards or whatever, but just take some time or to say make some time to do that because it's so important, not just for them, but it's also important for you. Research again shows us that when we do those types of caring and appreciative types of things, that we release tension and stress and anxiety in our own body. Our brain is like massaged. Our brain is uh, aided by doing those nice things. You get warm fuzzies floating around in our brain from doing those kind of appreciative things. And so there's a win-win. You're sharing and caring with the one person and you're also helping your own your own brain benefit from that. So this is a wonderful time to get in a habit of doing those kinds of things. Okay, so those are kind of some things that you can do for the holidays that's going to challenge your brain. And like I said, you don't want just, just to stay with the holiday season alone, but you want to incorporate it into the whole year. You can just tweak it as you need to, depending on what's going on in your life right then or what's going on in the season to fit that season or just, you know, spur the moment, just do something. But you want to incorporate discovery, problem solving, and interaction into your life because research also tells you that even though we continue to make new brain cells, you know, through our lifetime, we continue to do that, 50% of them will die off if they're not nurtured. Okay, it's just kind of like a seed. When you plant a seed and the seed sprouts, just because the seed sprouts doesn't mean that it's going to mature into whatever plant or tree or whatever that it was intended to be. It has to be nurtured. Same thing with our brain cells. They say, in fact, 50% of them will die off if they're not nurtured. And they get nurtured by engaging them into discovery and problem solving and interaction. But 99% of them will survive if you do nurture them. So if you do these activities where they have a chance to build new pathways and they have a chance to be strengthened, those new cells won't die off. And then you will have a brain that's still functioning adequately as the old ones, old cells naturally die off. You'll have new ones that are able to take over and take their place. So that's 
an important reason for you to weave these activities into your lifestyle. We have something to help you. If you go to our private group, Keep Your Brain Sharp Community, we have a challenge for December that will challenge your brain. And we have every day until Christmas, we have an activity that you can do that's connected to the holidays in some way that will involve you with discovery or problem solving or interaction or, or sometimes two or three of those things. So it'll involve you with those things if you do that what's on the calendar. So if you're not already a member of our Keep Your Brain Sharp community, go ahead and get on that Facebook group, Keep Your Brain Sharp community, and join it. doesn't cost anything to join it. And join it, and then you have access to that calendar, and you can get going on those holiday brain challenges because your brain's destiny is in your hands.